Hello and welcome to another web chat. My name's Peter Fisher. Today we're going to talk about web development and why it's so difficult to learn web development. Also, we're going to talk about what we need to learn web development and so forth. So, web development, what has happened over the years? I mean, why is it so tricky to call yourself a web developer, to become a web developer? Why is it so difficult to build a website in 2017? Well, you've got all of these acronyms that I could throw at you. MVC, ADDR, uh, we've got variants of frameworks, variants of, of libraries and, and, and everything else to learn in order to do that. And suddenly, as soon as you learn that, another one comes along, right? So, and the different frameworks might have different ways, different interpretations of what an MVC framework is. Um, you've got React, you've got Node, you've got Babel, you've got all of those other other things, Angular, um, Redux for the front end stuff. Some of that was also for the back end stuff. You've got PHP, you've got Python, you've got Java. Where do you start? What is, you know, where, where is the starting point? You've got JSON, you've got XML. Where are you going to store your configuration? You've got MySQL, you've got NoSQL. Where are you going to store your data? So, yes, it is when someone says it's very difficult to learn web development, usually it stems from just being completely bombarded by all the things that you need to learn. But what I'm going to say is all the things that you think you need to learn. Because let's face it, no one is going to learn everything. No one is going to learn every little small ounce of web development. Nobody's going to understand a framework like the back of their hand unless they have wrote it. No one is going to um, know all the performance, all the security fixes and improvements. It's That just can't happen. You cannot be a person, an expert of everything. Okay, that, that, that just simply isn't going to happen. And as you progress in your web development career, what you'll find out is that you'll, you'll end up reining in and, and narrowing down your field of study. So for example, in my case, I have focused on PHP. I mean, I do know Python and other things, obviously, because I play with those in my own spare time. That is another point that I would would like to make. I'll do that later on. But PHP is my bread and butter. And I've narrowed it down even further and said Symfony, Laravel, and WordPress, because they are the, the areas that my clients require. So I'm not necessarily interested, although I am aware of Cake PHP um, and other frameworks like Falcon for PHP. So I've played with those, but there is nothing I've done that uh, in sort of a production environment, I'm not making any um, clients or any work through those frameworks. However, I am aware of those. And I'm aware of those because I play with them sort of in my spare time because I want to keep my ear to the ground. And that's a very important point that I want to make is that you, when you narrow down your selection, what it is that you are actually working on, uh, you still want to be aware of everything around you. You don't want to suddenly find out that the industry has moved on 10 paces um, without you. It's even more difficult in front-end development, I feel, because there is sort of 101 ways to do one thing. Um, the, there is 101 ways to uh, add dependencies, for example. PHP seems to have it down pretty well with Composer, but with JavaScript, you've got other things that you need to consider, um, and it seems like every project is different, <laughs> uh, which is a bit frustrating at times. And then with the mobile applications, I will only do uh, Alloy.js at the moment. Um, but again, I'm aware of things like, you know, Xcode and, and Android doing things natively. But th the point I want to make is that it's very difficult from the outsider looking in and they're going, oh, my God, I've got to learn all of these things. This is terrible. You know, how on earth am I going to learn all of these things? And I get told that as soon as I learn them, then it moves on, you know. Well, yes, OK, you, you've got to be aware of those things, but you don't have to learn all of them. You don't have to. Uh, to to really you know you there's 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 no sort of 
uh, degree, if you will, of, of, of books and books and books that you need to read. Yes, you should read books. Yes, you should go to conferences. Yes, you, you should go to talks. Yes, you should always aspire to improve your skills, but you don't need to learn every little trick of the trade. Th those tricks of the trade that you'll learn will come through experience. They'll come through doing things wrong and then discovering how to do those right. Um, and they'll also come from talking to other developers, senior developers. So you want to be, in, you know, you want to be around. You want to be crowded around people who are better than you are. Um, so then you can learn off of the back of those. Web development is extremely difficult. I do appreciate that. I'm not dumbing this down. But what I would like to just say to any junior developer who is looking at this and thinking about going into web development as a career. Please know that there that I do not know every little thing about web development and I won't know every little thing about web development and nor will you. It's just a part of the parcel. Technology changes very rapidly and we have to keep up with it. But we have to decide what technology we don't use and what technology we do use. It's the same with deciding whether or not you're a front end developer or a back end developer. It's the same deciding whether you focus on, uh, I don't know, MySQL or Mongo, that kind of thing. Um, so no SQL or, or, or SQL. Same with, will you develop on a Linux machine or will you develop on a Windows machine? So are you more concerned about IIS, you know, the, um, the, the, the Windows server, or are you more concerned with perhaps Apache 2 or Nginx on Linux? And are you more concerned about Android development than iOS development? And what you can do is you can start s crossing things off and saying, you know what, I'm not going to spend all of my time worrying about X because I want to focus and narrow down and hone my skills on Y. And that's okay. You can do that. You can do that. I mean, obviously, don't completely shut yourself off from those things, as I've mentioned. But be aware that you do not need to understand and learn everything. However, saying that, I do highly recommend you buy books and you or you watch videos and you just learn things that perhaps are outside of your own comfort zone. And you want to keep reviewing this learning uh, process. You want to keep learning it. You want to keep reviewing it. You want to keep moving forward. Um, but please, please don't feel bombarded i know i know that's very easy for me to say because i'm just sat here uh but being f feeling bombarded with technology is 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 something that we all go through um and, and we're all like you know like you could you could either see it like a kid in the candy shop and you're like oh there's lots of new shiny things but you could also feel very overwhelmed with it now one thing i will mention as well is legacy stuff because when you're a junior developer, you probably, I mean, I'm talking from my experience now, you probably won't be suddenly on the new kit. The, the, the company that hires you probably won't be giving you access to the latest and greatest stuff, technology that they're working on. Because you have to prove yourself. And the way that they usually do that, or at least with me at least, is they put you on maintenance and they give you tasks to do on legacy systems. Now, that's great because that means that you're not going to be working on the new stuff. You don't have to worry about learning all the technologies, the new technologies. You can just focus on the, the, the core requirements of web development, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and maybe some back-end uh, code, and maybe some, I don't know, a, a, a JavaScript framework or two. But you don't have to worry or concern yourself with getting something wrong and then destroying a, a new system because you probably won't be given that right away. You normally go through a probational period where you're working on a backlog of issues on a legacy system. Excuse me. And that legacy system, like I said, is going to be using old code. It's going to be using old uh, hardware, old software, and therefore you're on old versions of things. You're probably going to be looking in the darkest depths of code that probably hasn't haven't been touched in a while. Um, and you want to uh, learn that system. You want to learn the languages, the frameworks, the libraries that that uses. And then you can use that experience when you progress and go further. Also, 
make sure you document things as well because it's not just you who's going to be dealing with that but it's also going to be your predecessors dealing with that too uh, so don't worry don't <laughs> web development is extremely difficult i'm not going to um dumb that down at all but just just don't don't worry about being bombarded straight away um but uh, good luck to anyone any web developers out there who are who's just started out, who've maybe come from university or whatever, um, who or may have done a, a course self-teaching and are looking to uh, start in the industry. Uh, I tip my hat off to you because it is a very fluxing sort of environment at the moment, especially with the front-end stuff. Uh, but HTML, CSS, JavaScript, a couple of uh, back-end languages and maybe a, a front-end framework or two, you know, that that is basically where your feet should be firmly rested on and then take it from there you don't have to worry about all the the the, the crazy stuff the new stuff that's coming out straight away uh, and you'll develop those skills as you go along remember when i was at university i was told quite rightly so that the stuff that i would learn in my first year would be outdated in my last year and that was correct uh, so the stuff you learn in your industry today might not be the stuff that you're going to be doing later on. However, what you can do is bring the experience with you, and that is the whole point. So don't worry about feeling overwhelmed. Anyway, I've taken up too much of your time. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. Cheers. Bye.